Agribusiness giant Wilma has reported higher full-year earnings amid a gradual economic recovery from the pandemic. 2020 net profit was up 19% at 1.5 billion US dollars. At the world's biggest palm oil trader saw robust performance in its food products businesses. Sales margins improved in its oil, flour and sugar businesses as China recovered from the pandemic. And Wilma will issue a special dividend of 6.5 Singapore cents a share, taking the total for last year to a record 19.5 cents. And Wilma is one of the world's biggest palm oil producers. How will it be affected as countries and investors go green? Well, for more, we're joined by Jeff Howey at SGX. Well, Jeff, what stands out uh, for you from Wilma's results? Well, we, Liz, we saw full revenue come in at $50.5 US billion, and that was above the consensus estimates of $48 billion US dollars. The real drivers of the results, uh, it was, really was the increased volume of sales. It was the rising commodity prices and, of course, the increasing brand awareness that Wilmar now attracts. As you, as you mentioned, it's, it's Asia's, if not one of the largest, world's largest, biggest uh, palm oil producers. And as one of the world's leading agribusinesses, it's now reaching some 5 billion consumers worldwide through its comprehensive distribution network through all the all the supermarkets, hypermarkets and retail outlets and so forth. Um, it's Look, much will depend on the commodity prices. Now, the company itself did say it, in, it, in, it intends to increase its the number of its integrated plants in new locations, look at complementary businesses such as soy sauce, vinegar and yeast, but it much really hinges on how well commodity prices can hold these gains. Because when you look at the price of crude palm oil, you look at the price of sugar, both those key commodity prices have risen some 80% from their April to May 2020 lows. And much of that has been on the back of a structural repricing of the US dollar, which is on the back of the extraordinarily expansionary monetary policy of the US, uh, the Fed Reserve and the ECB mm -hmm. and, 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 and so forth. So much really depends going forward of course, on how quickly the world, uh, just like all the other sectors and many other stocks, mm. it all depends how quickly the world can uh, embrace a new multilateral norm and, uh, and move forward in containing the COVID-19 virus. Mm. Jeff, well, you know, there is also a renewed focus uh, globally on sustainable goals, uh, climate change. Uh, how do you think that's going to affect Wilma, given its previous bad press on uh, deforestation? There has definitely been a renewed focus by institutional investors into sustainability-linked investing. And what we've seen is, uh, I guess, placement in the big indices that uh, are really uh, sustainability-linked or tracking or, um, or, or basically uh, seen to be environmental, social, um, environmental, social um, governance um, type of, um, type of uh, indices have been attracting uh, a lot of attention by the issuers. So we're seeing the listed stocks and the trusts basically um, start to cover, highly cover, these positions and placements in the world's leading sustainability-linked indices. And we saw even Wilmar, I think it was November last year, November 2020, we saw Wilmar actually join the Dow Jones Sustainability Asia Pacific Index. And that was basically uh, a testament to Wilma basically being in the 90th percentile for a number of key factors, which included raw material sourcing, it included human rights, it included labour practices, it, included, it included strategies for emerging markets, and it included uh, good customer relationship management as well as good crisis and, uh, and risk management procedures as well. So, it's 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 joined the ind index and it joins another four STI uh, stocks that are also a part of that key Dow Jones Sustainable uh, APAC index, which are DBS, uh, City Developments, mm. uh, Comfort Dell Growth, and of course Capital Land. And I think also back in November as well, we saw the the um, Selective uh, Carbon Care Asia Green uh, APAC REIT index, and we saw eight of the uh, Singapore REITs placed in that index as well. So mm. I guess the, the encouraging sign is, yes, there's an institutional, particularly a global institutional appetite for ESG-linked uh, indices and products. 
uh, and that a lot of that comes from Europe, but we're also seeing uh, a lot of uh, interest by the issuers here in Singapore to be part of those indices and products. All right, thanks so much. Uh, Jeff Howie at SGX.